Now, uh, the officially Ethernet is called IEEE 802.3. That's the standard. And it's subtitled CSMACD. Now, we'll come back to this CSMACD thing. Um, what you have with trains is that you need signals, and you know, the red and green signals, to make sure that you don't have two trains on the same track. Uh, otherwise, you have a, an accident, you have a collision. Now, the same with any network system that runs half duplex, you, you need to have signals. And in the case of Ethernet, this, the system they used was CSMACD, or Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection. Now, that is a bit old-fashioned because nowadays what we have done, we've deployed another track, another pair of wires, so we run the packets on separate wires. We send and receive on the same packets, so we don't have this fancy signaling system. We don't need it. It's there, but we don't use it. So, But unfortunately, this is entrenched in the standard, so we'll more about that later. Commonly known as Ethernet. Now, I don't want to waste your time with history, but you can go and look it, uh, look it up. Originally, this thing called Ethernet was developed by DEC, uh, Digital Equipment Corporation, uh, Intel, uh, and Xerox. And I always gauge the, the age of my audience. If anybody can remember the old PDP-11 computers, then uh, you are my age. <laughs> and then you will remember this. But anyway, uh, DEC, Intel, and Xerox came out with a thing called Blue Book Ethernet. And it was an in-house standard. And they thought, oh, this thing is so cool we cannot keep it for ourselves. So they went to the IEEE and they said, gentlemen, would you mind ratifying this as a standard? Which they did. But for some reason, they changed it a little bit. So what you have now is two frame formats. It's not two standards. Here's the standard. Standard is the second one. This is IEEE 802.3. That's the standard. But you have the formats, the the packet formats of the old version and the new version. And the strange thing is most people are still using the old version. You can see, and you will see when we run Wireshark, most packets you find on your network are still Ethernet 2 or version 2 or Blue Book. It's called various names, version 2, Ethernet 2, or Blue Book, uh, as opposed to Article E 8203. And the, those are just one of, you know, they happen. I can't tell you why it happened. It's just the way that things go. Okay, so keep in mind that when we say Ethernet, we actually, it's, it's a misnomer. Ethernet is really no longer with us. It's now 802.3 called Ethernet. Now, this slide is not really uh, important. That's if you have some time to read through this. But you'll see this is the new. This is the new, and that is the old. And uh, that are, you know, the, there are subtle academic differences. For example, there's a length field in the header and, and, and a type field in there. But I'll show you the moment you run Wireshark and you look at the packets, you can actually see that uh, issue. Uh, most packets nowadays have a type field, which means they're old. But don't uh, get hung up on this. Read it and you're, you know, when you have some spare time and see if you can digest it and we can talk about it later. But it's not that important. Okay, so let's talk about types of Ethernet. Now, uh, we started with 10 megabit legacy stuff, and you'll see even today we will spend well, three, four minutes on legacy Ethernet. I've often found that when I do um, training courses and people look at me and ask me, why would we bother even looking at stuff that's dead and gone? I say, well, firstly, it's not entirely dead and gone. There are still the, you know, 10 meg stuff running in old factories when if it works, you know, don't change it. Um, but it also lays the foundation for all the other ones. So if you start at the beginning, then all the modifications through the years make sense. Okay. So we started with 10 megs in the 80s, uh, and then we went to so-called fast Ethernet. Oh, this is a silly name because for those years it was fast at 100 megabits per second, but today it's so slow. And then we have gigabit Ethernet. Uh, we have 10 gigabit Ethernet, and there are. In fact, this list is incomplete. I think there are about, but I think it's it's more sort of um, experimental versions. It's not mainstream, but I've heard of uh, four terabyte Ethernet. Uh, they, they, it, it's the, I don't know where it's going to start. It, it will eventually venture into the terabyte speeds, but the high speeds are really backbone issues. The stuff that we found in factories, the stuff that I normally work with will be around here, 100 megs, 
and a gigabit. That, that's the mainstream stuff really that you find in, in the industrial environment. Beyond that, it gets very tricky uh, for the cabling and the and, and for the for the really fast ones. You can't use copper; you have to use fiber, and the connectors become an issue, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, okay, now let's have a look at the frame or the packet. Frame and the packet the same. For example, if there's a train coming past, uh, you can refer to it as a train. I can say, well, it's a locomotive with ten passenger coaches and a guard van at the back. It's still the same thing. So a frame and a packet is the same. It's just a frame gets a bit, you know, detailed. Now all networks use things like this. There's always a header. And I'll just use an H because the pen doesn't write so well. There's a header, and then there's D for data, and then there's a C for checksum, right? Now uh, what you will find in things like Ethernet, which is what they call uh, synchronous transmission. In other words, the clock at the receiver is synchronized with the clock at the transmitter. You have to shoot out a preamble, and I'll, I'll put this in the front. I'll just do it in another color, I'll just so you can see. And the preamble is basically uh, just for synchronization, so I'll show you here. And by the way, the SFD here and the preamble is really one thing. The, the, it's eight bytes. You'll see there are eight bytes. To go this total is eight bytes. Uh, and it goes one zero 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 one zero. Just a square wave. And then at the there's an extra byte called the startup frame delimiter. It's one zero one zero one zero double one. So it's like it's just a little glitch that says, okay, this is fine. From now on, you get the packet, right? And then you get the standard packet. And I'll put the, the little red boxes around it. There is the header, and this is the data. And this is the checksum. Okay. Now let's just work our way from the bottom up. The checksum you don't have to worry about. It is a, a four byte. And by the way, in, in uh, networking, we often use the word octets because sometimes people refer to seven bits as a byte, and the, the emphasis here is on eight bit bytes. So they tend to talk about octets, which means eight bit bytes. The frame check sequence is just a four byte cyclic redundancy check. It's a long division checksum. You don't care two hoots about it. It's just there, and the, the network cards will deal with it. Then there's a uh, the data. Now, you see that the data has what we call a pad. Now, some, some textbooks don't show the pad. But if you look here, what it says is that the data plus pad is a minimum of 46. Now, in the days of uh, uh, collision detection, they had to make sure that the packets were of a minimum size uh, to make sure that the collision detection works. And what they did is they, they would just bump up the data. So if you had like three bytes of data, they said, uh, uh packets too short, they add uh, 43 bytes so that you have a minimum of 46, just to make sure the packet is, is, uh, is long enough so that the collision detection works. Um, uh, if there's time later, I, don't, I can explain to you in detail um, the Russian RV, I, I don't think it's necessary now. So you can ask me later and I'll explain to you in detail. But uh, because we don't really work with collision detection nowadays, I think it's sort of historical value. I don't want to waste time. So that's the data. Now the data maximum is, this is important, is 1500 bytes. That's the, the payload, 1500. Just remember it's a golden figure, don't forget. Right. Then we have the header. Now you see there are three things in the header. There's the destination uh, address, and I'll, I'm going to write in blue. It's the, it's in other words, it's the destination, and I call it the MAC address. And we'll, we'll look at the MAC in detail. Then you have the source MAC. That is, you'll see now that's that it's that long number that zero zero one zero one. It's the the number of the card of the of the interface, and length. But the length could also be type, depending on whether you look at the the old blue book version. Or the new ACA 2.3 version. So it is, and the the um, the systems can never get uh, confused because the type numbers in decimal are way above 1500. So if the type number is like 800 uh, or whatever, no, yeah, let's say it's 800 hex. If you convert that to decimal, it's much more than 1500. So it can't be linked. It has to be typed, and so on. Okay, so that's a very simple way of 
distinguishing between the two is that if, they, if they're too big for a length, they are tight. And that's it. Can you see how simple an Ethernet packet is? It's basically a bunch of data with a checksum at the end, and in the front there's a little sticker that says who sent this and who's supposed to pick it up. That's it. Right. Okay, so let's go on here. Uh, so now we're just going to briefly talk about the MAC address. Um, now, it's, it's a hexadecimal string, and I'll show you. Now, it, it, it looks like this, 00010A23. Uh, now, you can write it with dashes or colons, and it is, in fact, an, a 48-bit binary string, but we just uh, write it in hex to make it uh, human-readable. Machines don't worry about it. They read it in, in binary. By the way, can I just ask... Uh, you guys, if the, the, it, we don't have the time for this, um, you need to get comfortable in binary and hex. And if you can't do it in your head, what I suggest you do is just go online and make sure you understand what hex is and the relationship between the two and have a calculator, even your smartphone handy, handy when you do your assignments and stuff so that you you can do it. You know, I grew up with the stuff. You know, In fact, Computers came after me, uh, you know, and the first computers we got from Hewlett Packard. If you open the manual, it had the first chapter was an explanation on how binary optal and hex works because nobody had a computer background. It was, they, these were new things. It was a new technology. Uh, nowadays we assume that you know these things, so you just have to go. But if you if you get stuck, I'll help you next time. Right now, the MAC address is. Is like the name. It, it identifies like, for example, like Brett in in computer land, you would be zero 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 one zero zero eight two three FC three whatever. That's your name. Um, and these things are normally pre-programmed into the cards, but not necessarily. In other words, there's no rule that says it has to be, but it typically is. Okay. And uh, uh, you can in in the case of uh, let's say a network card, and that's getting old-fashioned because nowadays it's all built in, but you could often not read it on the card. You would have to plug it in and then use software to read it. Nowadays, if you, if you turn your laptop upside down, the MAC address is normally on a sticker somewhere uh, below. Somewhere. You'll find it. And also on industrial equipment like Modbus devices or whatever, that, that Ethernet MAC address is stuck on a sticker somewhere on the bottom or the back of the device. Okay, so now there are basically three types of addressing of which we really only use two. And this one is 99% of the time we use what is called unicast. Now, unicast is like, let's say, for example, uh, I talk to you guys like I do now, and all three of you can hear my name, uh, can hear my voice, but I would say, Mick, I would like you to do something. This is what I call unicast. In other words, I'm blurting it out, and re regardless of the fact that everybody can hear me, I'm really only addressing Mick. And this is called unicasting. And this is a typical MAC address. This is a typical unicast address. Okay, one, you know, one speaker, one recipient. Uh, sometimes I want everybody to respond. For example, I would say, guys, uh, let's have a break now. In other words, I'm not addressing you by name. But I'm, I'm, it's a broadcast. Let's it's it's have a break. In which case, I make all the bits one, or in hexadecimal, that's f f f f f f f f. It means all of you, please read this message and respond to it. Right. So that's what we call a broadcast. Now, uh, the other one, in fact, in all the years that I've been uh, involved in networking, I've never used it. It's called multicasting. It is where you send a message to a select group of devices. In other words, just looking at the names here, I could, for example, say, okay, uh, let's do this, but I'm actually only speaking to Brett and Dominic. It's, in other words, I'm selecting a subset of my potential uh, audience. Uh, it's called multicasting. Very, it is used, um, but as I said, very, very seldom. What you'll find if I just go back is, is probably 99% you know, of the time it's uh, unicasting, and then with the odd uh, broadcasting. You see, when we do ARPs and stuff, we, we do broadcasting. So that is it. Simplicity itself. As long as you know what a MAC address looks like, what it is, uh, what it's used for. Right. So 